All right, welcome back. Let's continue. He has nothing to say. <laughs> Least you could do is look at me while being dismissive. <laughs> you might as just do as an unknown, unknown to blame, Justice Dono. Justice Dono? He's been watching too many samurai flicks. It'll take far more than that to cut down Simon Blackwell. Oh well, such as you, there's no hope against my superior swordsmanship. It's a trial, not a sword fight, Prosecutor Blackwell. <laughs> there's a perfectly good explanation for the lack of prints on that statue. You might recall that, that blood stained cloth found at the scene of the crime. This is what happens. The blood was the mayor's. So, um, what are you getting at? Hold your mind, boy. Why is there blood on that cloth? Stop that ritter and you shall see the hole you brought. You thought you found was but an illusion. Now let's see. How is that cloth used? Is it used to wrap the statue? Maybe the old man wrapped the statue in the cloth. I swear, he wasn't touching that statue directly when he used it to strike back at the mayor. Ah! Precisely. Bully for you, boy. Ah, uh, it was nothing. I thought I was going to start by eliminating you two. Just closed the hole for the prosecution. I did. I, I did. Alright, that statue is wrapped in a cloth with no fingerprints. It's plain as day. No proof that there are no holes in our theory of the alderman striking back. Oops. Uh. Now do you see how dull the mind is? I'll make sure to sharpen it next time. A particular frightening inmate which told me that. He always tenderly honed his blades before he went to work. Like a samurai of yore. <laughs> samurai? Sounds more like a homicidal maniac to me. Actually, he was working in the prison's kitchen at the time. Wait, the inmate was a murdering samurai prison chef? Hmm. It would seem the victim and his killer were the only ones that were there after all. I was kind of attached to that hole. Now what? Apollo, I just thought of something. They didn't find anyone's fingerprints on that statue. Who's to say this? someone other than the alderman didn't hit the mayor with it? Why didn't I think of that? Anybody could have not left prints on it. Hmm. Then who, pray tell, struck the mayor with the statue? Please eliminate it with your wisdom, young lady. There's one, only one answer. The real killer. Prove the existence of this real killer, then. What evidence have you? I'll give you evidence, all right. A Athena, are you sure about that? For your words, Apollo, I'm fine. Take a look at this. Black feathers and tracks blizzard from Yokai were found at the scene. I believe they're from the third party who struck the mayor with that statue. So I'm not suggesting that some sort of monster killed the older men. That's exactly what I'm suggesting. Objection! <laughs> no, Athena, you just lost the little credibility we had left. Ah! Sorry, sorry. Guess I got carried away. So Justice, we have no time to deal with the objection between members of the defense. S sorry, Your Honor. It's just, this kid's still, well, a kid. Oh, you mean it? You're reporting this to Mr. Wright. So this court to believe that feathers and tracks are from a yokai, as you put it. Uh, no, Your Honor. I believe they are fabrication. The real killer wants us to believe some kind of monster would murder the alderman. Hmm, interesting. And why do you suppose the killer would do that? Um, why indeed? Mr. Justice, you seem to be new as this as your partner is. Ouch. This, I'm not reporting to Mr. Wright. Boy, fool bright. Explain to us, baldness, what these brats are missing. You know, the who and why behind those feathers and tricks. What? You mean if we explain all that? Ah, ha, ha. My rescue and prowess is not equal. I'm starting to think I chose the wrong profession. Very well, let's hear about these so-called yokai feathers and tricks. Witness testimony. 
feathers and tracks. Third case to but there is a one man's attempt to crush the opposition to Michigan merger. Merton in a panic when the amazing nine tails helped them bullying the protesters. They struck the village's fears by fabricating a monster. The strange feathers and tracks he planned to make look like a okay was the killer. His feathers and tracks stoked the villagers' fears. Absolutely, he knew exactly how to prey on their superstitious minds. Those feathers only gave way to the idea the older man was slain by a demon. He accused the accursed demon Ten Mataro, that is. Ten Mahu? Ten Mataro, legendary demon locked away within the village's forbidden chamber. From your young age, the villagers are taught to fear the great black feathered demon. That they are blinded to another and more plausible explanations. Hold it! Hold on for a second. Before we start letting our machinations run wild, isn't there someone else that could be considered a suspect? Mr. Judge, please explain yourself. On the day of the incident, there was a special event held at QB Manor. As part of this event, there is someone dressed in the likeness of Ten Mataro. I say this person is the most more likely suspect than the legendary demon. Objection! Hmm. Dullard, you're playing right into the killer's mind games. What? Listen here, the feathers and tracks were merely red herrings. The villagers believe the murder to be the work of the real Ted Mataro. However, the police believe the person th the person in the Ted Mataro suit is the killer. Ah! The defendant sought to vow this confusing, still this confusion to order to reflect the blame away from himself. However, he was knocked unconscious by the alderman. That's our mentally deficient mayor was caught red-headed at the scene of the crime. Objection! Do you want to believe that Mayor Tenma would do something so stupid? Objection! Everyone speaks for itself. Full bright. Right, it was the mayor's last ditch effort to stop the opposition before the things got crazy. Amazing Night Tales was fueling both the Grokai craze and the anti-merger movement. Plus he's one of the better known mass wrestlers and the hometown favorite. That's where the mayor panicked and set out a path of injustice. The P.O. Ninetales Villa really believe a yokai is behind the crime. Yokai sightings are a history event there, so I wouldn't be surprised if they did. Hmm, I must say, a crime that preys upon the innocent and impressionable minds. Just so, a particular silver-tongued inmate once told me that would answer the following words for me. Innocent of heart are the easiest prey. You don't say, this is made a con artist. No. He was framed for the murder of his beloved. I actually felt sorry for the four chip. Wait, so it wasn't the predator, but rather the prey? Yes, well... Now then, defense may proceed with their cross examination. Okay... Okay. How did he plant them, exactly? But it doesn't add up. What you say is true, why top up with the murder? <laughs> what do you mean? Claim that our client planned yokai events to soak the visitors' fears. So then why stop there? Why murder Alderman Kyuhi? Hmm, that's that point. It isn't, isn't it? So, your honor agrees that there's no reason for the murder, correct? Objection! Perhaps the killing was on the spur of the moment. I'm saying it wasn't premeditated. From the outset, I had no intention of praying he didn't hear babble. However, the fact is, the mayor made a, dis a startling discovery. A startling discovery? Why don't I like the sound of that? Well, the man could be a secret identity. Apollo. I think Professor Blackpool has figured out the Alderman's secret identity. And if he has, why would it be a motive for the mayor to commit murder? This is not good. A sort of fur was discovered at this crime scene. It's from the mask worn by the Amazing Ninetales. Therefore, we can conclude this mask was at the crime scene. Oh my, but where did it have been there? The victim was a former pro wrestler and a victim of the anti-merger movement. Need I say more? Well, um... Ah, you could it really be? Hm. Your baldness is an epiphany, I see. 
A victim executed was the amazing Ninetales. The discovery of such was his motive for murder. No. Order, order. Very shocking development. Motive clearer than crystal clear. What do we do now, Apollo? I didn't think they'd tie the alderman's secret identity to the mayor's motive for murder. At least we release my real point. Where the alderman had to forge a secret identity? Does it not pique your interest, your baldness? I mean, it does. It is odd that he had to correct this other person, huh? Just to secretly participate in the anti-merger movement. Very astute of you, your baldness. Right, now take a look at this. Oh. You value your dearest life. You emerged in Tinesville, Tenma Town. This welcome was fall in Alderman Kubey's pocket. What? At present, the Alderman's wife is in the hospital. That letter is clear evidence the mayor was blackmailing and by threatening her life. Wait, didn't the blackmail letter sent the Tenma Tower go, the Mayor Tenma go missing? Right after the Alderman's murder? I think maybe the killer took the letter from the mayor after the murder and planted it in the Alderman's pocket. It's possible, but we don't have any proof that that's what happened. Talk about being up the creek without a paddle. Hmm. Britain would have made a clean getaway if he had just left after playing the yokai things. But he was not that cold by his sudden decision to kill the Amazing Ninetales. So this was Amazing Ninetales counterattack that brought on the, the entire crime to light. Wait a sec. What rights claiming the mayor killed the alderman after playing the yokai evidence? The mayor was knocked out cold after immediately after that. Take the Fulbright. Please add the previous statement to your testimony. Hmm. So let me get this straight. You believe the mayor planted the yokai evidence before the murder, not after. Absolutely. And then he was stuck up by the cold by the alderman's last punch. We wouldn't have had a chance to plant the evidence after that. Hmm, something's not right here. I'd have believed that a stiff, humorless man like the mayor could be behind such a stunt. Uh, we have to do something, Apollo. Before they pin it all on the mayor. We're gonna need to prove that Mayor Tano didn't actually plant that yokai stuff. How are we supposed to do that? Um, I have me idea. Um, where's that photo? Mm, yeah. How is their blood tracks then? Objection! Like the Fulbright, your sense of justice is anything but fair. What's this? You dare question my justice again! Yes, and I'm gonna prove it to you. Take a look at this photo. This is the crime scene photo. And what does this prove? It proves of when the feathers and tracks were planted. But I already told you they were planted before the murder. The defendant planted the okay evidence and was knocked out without killing this victim. Oh, but that would be impossible. Look right here, it's clear when the feathers and tracks were left at the scene. You look right there. Are you just pointing to the yokai feathers and tricks, Mr. Justice? Yes. See how the feathers are on top of the blood? And the tracks are made in blood? In other words, yokai evidence could have resulted only after the murder. But then the mayor must have planned the evidence after killing the alderman. But you said it yourself. The mayor had been knocked unconscious after thereafter. There would have been no time for him to plant the any events at all. Therefore, there must have been someone else besides the mayor and the alderman at the crime scene. Ah, there must be some mistake! Order! Order! Where's your evidence? You can't possibly have any, can you? <laughs> evidence? Oh, I have evidence. In fact, I have an eyewitness's testimony for you. <laughs> you do! But now! <laughs> Was my faulty sense of justice really just half baked? He's taking this really hard. 
Hmm, Mr. Justice. What is this testimony regarding a third party that you claim to have? I have it right here, Your Honor. It's a sworn testimony of Mayor Tenma's daughter. The, the witness, Jinxi Tenma, saw Yokai in the hallway after summoning upon the scene. It was Demon Tenma Taro. He's a source of those feathers and tracks. Will someone please say something? The defense will explain to the court exactly what he means. You... You dare to mock this court injustice itself! You're unfit to bear your name, boy! Your bombness, it appears our defense attorney is... is delirious from exhaustion. Hold it! Hollow, think of something quick before you're held in the court. Oops. What do you think I'm trying to do? Before you decide whether I should step down, please, hear me out. Very well, Mr. Justice, I'm all ears. But you, you better explain yourself well. What was this yokai you were talking about? It's all in this statement here. Jinxie Tenma asserts that she saw Tin Mataro. I thought she discovered the crime scene and called the police. She came around a corner in the hall. It was around here. That she saw Tin Mataro fleeing towards the foyer. The judge asserts that whoever was impersonating this monster is the one who left to find those feathers and tracks behind, intentionally or otherwise. <laughs> what? <laughs> How incredibly unjust! Why haven't I heard about this before? The defense just proved there was someone else! The mayor isn't the killer! This was all set up! The rescue is an effective felon, after all! Apollo, no one has shifted into our favor! Good, let's keep it that way. Objection! Hello. <laughs> Little do you realize that the threat that though you were in the midst of a fray, your sword is broken. My sword? I didn't know I had one to break. Are you implying that there's a problem with my claim? Consider this. If that yokai impersonator had fled, indeed fled towards the foyer. That fool and the fop would have seen him. Fool and fop? Oh, you mean Filch and LaBelle. Hmm, now that you mention it. Both Finnis, Filch, and Florent LaBelle were in the foyer at the time. But they haven't stated that I saw a yokai, have they? You are considered that yokai is but a figment of scared girls, a scared little girl's imagination. Uh, the one those do see Ten Matar and person are passed by. I only asked him ourselves. I was just about to say that myself. No, really, I was. Vince would like to call Mr. Phineas Phelps, caretaker of QB Manor, to the stand. I just know he must have seen something. Hmm, I suppose we can't ignore the fact that the little girl believes she saw the monster. I trust you have no objections to Mr. Justice's request, Ms. Prosecutor Blackwell. I understand that Mr. Phelps is enjoying a nap out in the lobby. Hmm, I knew that the Tanuki was a rare find. We captured him. I didn't think he'd end up a witness. Do with him as you will. D did you just say captured? No, wait. I don't want to know. Very well then. Bailiff, please go wake up Mr. Filch and escort him to the witness stand. There he is. Will you just state his name and occupation, please? Name's Filch. Phineas Filch. Caretaker of QB Manor. <laughs> Oh, and this is for you, your lordship. Just a little something I thought you might like. Oh my, what a fabulous pair of shoes. And your honor will do just fine, Mr. Filch. Ah, those shoes, it's those shoes again. Um, did they belong to Detective Fulbright? Don't tell me Filch stole them again. They're all yours, your honorship, sir. What? But do seem awfully expensive. Yep, too expensive for me, but I reckon they'd be good for someone like your honorship. Hmm, it's a kind gesture, but legal ethics dictate I can't accept such gifts. Oh, ethics, ethics, just take them if you want them. Polish them up real nice for you, too. I'm sorry about the shoes, Mr. Filch, but I will accept your testimony. The court would like to hear whether you assaulted Mataro in the foyer after the murder. Good. 
regarding the fire. At the time of the murder, I was on guard duty in the fort, just like Mr. Kubi asked. I was making sure no one, fair, foul, fishy, or otherwise, could get to our guest. Uh, I was still in my office, keeping a good watch when the murder happened after 3 p.m. But I didn't say nothing out ordinary, no siree! But the yoke I keep jabbering on about was a bit of fence my little girl's dreams. So you're telling me this court... You... you... So you're telling this court you never saw anyone dressed up like Ten Mataro? Yep, was well, guarding the whole time. That's the truth. The holy truth. The nothing. The nothing but the butter. The truth. Ten Mataro, I don't really believe that all that yokai mumbo jumbo, do ya? I certainly don't. Oh. Hmm. My bracelet. It's something the matter, Apollo. My bracelet keeps squeezing my arm. Really. Do you think Mr. Tanuki, er, I mean, Filch has been lying to us? I wouldn't rule it out. No. I could just zero in on a tell. Some sort of nervous habit. Ah! What the? Ah, what, what the? What the? What's a hawk doing in here? I didn't use my trusty cohort, Taka. Seems to take a quite a liking to the courthouse. Made it its new home, in fact. He doesn't live with you. You know, in jail. You've never heard of a courthouse bird. Talk silly loads trickery and fraud. That queer power of yours seems to have fitted my dear bosom buzzard. This isn't some sort of trick or... Ah! How could spot squat like this? What, what the heck's going on around here? Run for the hills! No pets are there, no so in the courtroom. <laughs> ah, somebody help! Oh, he's really having a bit of sport. You won't harm, you'll save when truly famished. Uh, in that case, Prosecutor Black will... You'll show your feathered friend is properly fed. It seems we have to do this the old-fashioned way. We'll be fine, I think. There's someone dressed as Tin Mataro there, Fitch just seen him. We'll have to put our faith in Jinxie's statement for now. Mr. Justice, please proceed with your request examination. <laughs> Bird is still in his head. <laughs> okay. Um, next time we come back, we'll get to this cross examination. So, until next time.